Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, we randomly insert air horns so you don't fall asleep during Zelda's lullaby. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I'm joined, as I am always joined, by my co-host and band leader, Mark Mitchell. <laughs> We're doing a music thing. <laughs> we are doing a music thing. Yeah. Um, Unless you want me to be band leader and you want to be host. No, I'm, fi I'm fine being okay. band leader. Um, we are not actually going to insert air horns into this episode, right? No, I don't think so. Okay. I mean, not unless you want me to. No, no. Well, I'll leave it. I'll I just drop. I'll just drop like a couple. Like, right? No, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna do any of them. Mark, um, did you see that my favorite movie of all time, The Abyss, is coming back to theaters? I did for see. one night only. Yeah, see, I did see. You're out of town on I, on December sixth. I right? am. Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna buy a bunch of tickets and just invite everyone I know. <laughs> so I'm sorry that you're out of town, but I'm like I'm I'm turning it. This is like party mode. I am bummed to be missing it. Are they? Re I saw that it was coming back. Are they? Have they like remastered the effects? It's a 4K restoration special edition, which is different from the director's cut, which was the one that was like re-released um, in like '91 or whatever. Um, uh, and James Cameron is like, there are new surprises in it that, like, I'm very Whoa. excited. I love The Abyss. Uh, I know there's, to date, no perfect version of it. Like, both the director's cut and the original theatrical cut uh, have different problems. Uh, but I am so excited for there to be a third version of this thing and to see it in the theater, which I've never done. Yeah, that is, that's a lot of fun. I'm very sad to be missing it. Um. Also, what's a, what, one night only? What is this? One night only. What? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. I don't know for sure. Oh, you did not expect to be called on that because it sounded. I, <laughs> uh, uh, I think it might be from. Okay, well, I think probably what it sounded like. Yeah. is way different from what it sounds like in my head. Sure, but I think it might be from Dreamgirls. Okay, I don't know Dreamgirl, so it could be. And I know it enough that I think maybe the <laughs> song is from it, but yeah, not, but not not much more than that. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, well, that, that's great. We're off to a good start. Um, the uh, let's just point people to our Patreon, Patreon.com/slash Nintendo Cartridge Society, uh, where you can go and support us if you like at the eight bit or sixteen bit levels. You get access to our once a month episodes of miniseries that we put out. Uh, we've done detective shows. We've done Broadway shows. We're about to embark on uh, NCS Arcade, where we're going to be playing games on Nintendo Switch Online and the expansion pack um, that Mark and I have never beaten before. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. And the first one of these that we're going to be doing is The Legend of Zelda, the Minish Cap. Um, so we're starting off with an expansion pack one. Which I think is okay. You should play along with us if you are interested uh, in doing that and in hearing us talk about it. Uh, and then uh, beyond that, you should join our Discord. Uh, you can email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. Gmail we can send you an invitation to the Discord where uh, we will... I think we do a lot of rankings on this show. Um, and I think the ranking that we are about to embark on uh, is like even more subjective than anything else we've ever done. So I expect a lively debate on this one on the Discord. I think so too. Um, but Mark, let's get into it. Let's rank the Ocarina music from The Legend of Zelda, The Ocarina of Time. All right. Mark, why are we doing this? It is the 25th anniversary of The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Originally released in Japan on November 21st, 1998, and November 23rd in North America. Love a good Thanksgiving game. Oh, yeah, for sure. Do you think people thought of this as a Thanksgiving game at the time that they were like, 
turkey, mashed potatoes, and ocarinas. Oh, I bet they. I think they were, people were giving thanks to Nintendo <laughs> for <laughs> Ocarina of Time. Uh huh. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Uh, thank you so much to listener Jason who uh, suggested this uh, by sending us an email: Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail dot com. Uh, this is a good idea, and I think something that we've been uh, kind of kicking around for a while that. Uh, you know, we we like ranking the sort of esoterica of individual games or of series and stuff. And the ocarina pieces of music in Ocarina of Time are so they're aesthetic, but they're also like they all have gameplay functions. Um, and so there are so many different dimensions that we will have to talk about them through. That I think this is gonna I think this is gonna be interesting, and I have genuinely. No idea how I it's going to go. Yeah, I don't have any idea. Sometimes, you know, we come into these and we have our personal favorites mm-hmm. or one that uh, feels like it's going to be number one. I really I really don't know with this. Yeah, it's. I mean, it feels like there, there are a couple of, like, sort of iconic songs, like the, the pieces that Link er- learns early, just that you end up using them more. But, like, are those the best pieces of music? They're sort of, like, the simplest. Um, so... Uh, yeah, a v- very fascinating to see how all of this goes. Mark, how would you describe your relationship to the Ocarina songs? Do you have them, like, under your fingers? Do you, uh, like, as you play through Ocarina of Time, do you, like, remember them? Or are you always looking them up? Uh, what, what's your relationship to these little pieces of music? Yeah, I definitely can't just recall the, like, Ocarina notes you're supposed to play off yeah. the top of my head. And I feel like there is a I would say it's about 50-50. There's about 50% of these when I was looking at the title, I was like, oh, yeah, I definitely know that one. Right. And then there's about 50% that I think when I hear it, I'll remember it. Yeah. But uh, yeah. but I can't recall it off the top of my head based just on the song. How about you? Uh, well, I mean, a lot of them I, I, I have uh, just, you know, the... I have, like, the buttons, like, memorized. Um, but I would say more than that, I know the music of them, right? That, like... Uh, I can, you can point to one and then I can like sing it and then have to like translate that to Ocarina by way of <laughs> like uh, Nintendo, uh, Nintendo 64, 64 controller. controller. Or as, as we are going to be using today, a uh, Nintendo uh, 3DS um, to be our sort of like live band jukebox here um, as we talk about. But I'm the band leader. That, You're the band that leader. That Nintendo 3DS should know its place. I mean, I'm the band here. <laughs> <laughs> You can be the band leader. I'm fine. That's with all that. I want. I just want the title. Right, right. Um, so, but but first, I wanted to like kind of dig, and I think it is uh, important that we sort of like set the stage for um, how unique of a game mechanic this ocarina is, and the fact that they like kind of put a extremely limited but sort of real instrument into this game, and how also it just became kind of a template for. 3D Zelda. There mm-hmm. was an expectation that Link would have a musical instrument and you will use it. I mean, you know, you have the um Wind Waker. The Wind Waker. <laughs> yeah. In Wind Waker. Mm-hmm. You have like Link Wolf Wolf Link. Yeah, that's howling. That's one of the like uh, kind of poor applications of it that like uh it never wolf link howling a tune never really sounds like the tune <laughs> uh-huh um and it they're also like very context sensitive like you can't just like sit down and be like i'm gonna jam out with wolf link <laughs> um just like you can't really jam out with the wind waker like the ocarina i feel like is the purest form of this where if you want to just play it like an instrument you sort of can yeah um uh but okay so the the ocarina i want to just like go over some of what the actual uh like musical mechanics sorry i'm just gonna say the goddess's harp from skyward sword oh yeah gotta name them all yes yes thank you (laughs) um uh which can you just pull that one out and play it whenever no right yeah i feel like it's mostly used just uh in very specific locations right and you're like strumming it Uh more than anything yeah in rhythm and that's really i feel like the part of it is just like keeping the rhythm yeah which is also like that's what the wind waker is um, but uh, the ocarina is melodic, right? It wants you to play a melody. Um, and speaking of melodies, just want to talk about uh, what the what the actual ocarina can do. So it's five notes um, that are played with the C buttons and the A button. Is that right? I think that's right. I think that's right because the B button takes you takes you out of it. Um, but these five notes 
are based on the D Dorian scale. Um, so that's uh, from from D to D. It, it spans a, a full octave. The lowest note and the highest note are the same note, one octave apart. Um, and it's only five, you know, three other notes uh, like in between those uh, between those two octave points. Uh, and they are D, F, A, B, and D again. So all all in D Dorian, but like kind of crucially not in. Um, like the key of D major or the key of D minor, even though it like hovers around this like tonic of D. Um, so, and uh, I apologize if any of this gets too music theory y, but uh, I just want to like it's 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 interesting how limited the range on the ocarina is and how many discrete melodies are based off of like little nuggets mm -hmm. that just come from these five notes, um, and how these five notes don't like fit super nicely into any one key um so like and sorry yeah. when you say that there's five notes you mean that there's like five notes that are being used to create the music because in the game itself it requires six button inputs in order to y y yes so fi five different notes um and yet yeah, yes the there are uh the yeah that's right you're right that there are and a lot of them are three repeated twice right, right. Um, and I guess the uh, um, the bolero of fire is eight notes, right? Because it's da do da do da do da do, one two three four five six seven eight. And the yeah, I think that's right. Plus the which we're not going to be talking about, but the, because it can be anything, it could be the most beautiful music in the world. The, the uh, scarecrow song. It's probably not going to be the most beautiful music, <laughs> but in the world, it could though. be. But it is not. <laughs> uh, we're not going to be talking about that one either. Right. And that's also like eight inputs in order to that you have to put in right and so the scarecrow song is a song that up. like you make it up and then when you see the scarecrow or like the location where the scarecrow can be in different areas you play that song again and it's what summons him but because you make it up uh it can be again the most beautiful music in the world right uh but so it it's won't number be, one will in not our be, hearts no and last <laughs> it's like baby park <laughs> um but uh the and, and you know the the ocarina will play notes beyond the five that um, you can play by straight pushing the buttons. You can bend the the pitches either like up or down a uh, whole or half step, depending on where it is in the in the scale. Um, all like diatonic to that D Dorian mode, um, but uh, the game never makes you do that. Um, and then after you play the sort of like key phrase, um, the ocarina will continue and usually play notes that the ocarina can't play otherwise um and they all have like different accompaniment um which will sort of fill out the harmonic information to let us know if we're in the key of d sometimes we're in the key of g sometimes we're in uh the key of e um and there are some like funny things that happen with uh like the way the all, all of the warp songs um start in minor keys and well with the exception of the uh the Nocturne of Shadow, which doesn't obey any music rules, <laughs> um, but the 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 other three of the or the other five of the adult songs start off in minor keys and end in major keys. Um, and again, it's doing this harmonically like complicated stuff within just a couple measures of music. Um, the uh, all is like very smartly and um, compactly composed. Uh, it's all just really fun stuff to like really dig into, uh, and I'll try not to be boring about it from here on out. <laughs> no, I think it's uh, I think it's a really interesting perspective on all of this, and I'm really excited to start hearing these songs on the Nintendo 3DS because even when we were doing tests a little bit earlier, it, there's so much um, memory tied up in hearing yeah. you know somebody just working their way through a Nintendo 3DS. Um, so what we're gonna do is uh. I mean, I guess we're going to hear some of these pieces of music um, by pulling up my uh, trusty ocarina here. Got a little bit of ocarina happening there. Um, uh, and uh, just kind of like working our way through these pieces of music. Uh, Mark, where are we starting? Yeah, let's start at the top. So we're going to start with Zelda's Lullaby. Um, and in totality, because we're, getting, we're not going to do the Scarecrow song... Uh, because again, it is both the most beautiful and least beautiful piece of music yep. ever written. Yep. Um, there are twelve total songs that we're going to be talking about. Six, basically, that you get when you're a kid, and six uh, as an adult link. Uh, so we're going to start here with Zelda's Lullaby as sort of the like table stakes. This is the you know song of the 
uh, royal family of Hyrule. Uh, it goes like this. Pretty simple. Um, uh, I, I, that's one of the like easier ones to like remember the inputs to. And like, uh, as far as the gameplay is concerned, it like unlocks uh, a, a lot of like when there's a Triforce yeah. thing on the ground, um, it'll it'll let you in. Um, so this one is well. I, how much analysis do we want to get into each one as we play them, or like thoughts, or do we want to go through all of them and then kind of like double back? Uh, I I think may do we want to try to do tiers at this point? Oh, yeah, that's that's, as, a, as, that's as, a good idea. As we're as we're playing them, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Zelda's Lullaby, iconic, iconic, and that that's kind of where I'm immediately a uh, I'm interested in your thoughts on how to handle this because are we judging it as a piece of ocarina music mm. by like isolated because Zelda's Lullaby and we hear a little bit of a more lushly orchestrated version of it you know when the um after you finish your inputs but it's used as underscore in so many different parts yeah. of uh the Zelda series like after Ocarina of Time going forward you know it features heavily in Tw Twilight Princess it features heavily right. in Skyward Sword you know what i mean where it's just like so it's yeah, so that's where I'm struggling, because, like, as a piece of music for the Zelda franchise... It's e kind of a big deal, Easily, yeah. like, in a top tier. Uh, and so, yeah, but but uh, But I, I, I agree with that, and I agree with, like, the difficulty of that, because it's also, like, it's sort of unremarkable uh, in its, uh, in, like, its greater orchestration, um, and is just, like, it feels like table stakes to me, which uh, is also, like... Is that good or is that bad? I don't really know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, because it's the first one, we can do anything we want with it and yeah. then adjust around it. We put it in B tier? B tier? Let's put it in B tier, yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, Mark, what's next? So up next is Epona's song. Uh, okay, here we go. Epona's song, the song of the, the horse and of the, of the ranch. goes like this. played it poorly but uh that one i find to be very charming and pastoral does a very nice job of mm -hmm. just with those um the same three notes that zelda's lullaby use just rearranged um is uh is is very charming i am tempted to put that one in in the a tier i feel like it's more effective than uh zelda's lullaby at conveying what it does yeah and i think with these two in and we'll see what happens with the third because then the pattern will truly be established yes but i feel like we are kind of narrowing our focus to the ocarina -ness of it you know like yes. how effective yes. it is in those you know um six notes or eight in the case of the blero fire but so yeah i i agree with you i think is just like a discreet little piece of music that is played on your ocarina i think a pona song is uh, A tier. All right, uh, a, a tier. Where are we going next? Next up is Saria's song. Uh, so this is a a song of 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 the forest, um, and it goes like this. I need two hands for this. <laughs> and of course, uh, Navi has to ask me if I want to uh, talk to uh, Saria, and then also if I want to talk to her. I said no to both. Man, talk about a song yeah. that is synonymous with Ocarina of Time. Yeah. I mean, because it plays incessantly as you're in the Lost Woods. <laughs> it does, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I How think do you it's feel? A, I think it is a... Uh, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, I think I think so too. I think it's probably also an A tier song. Yeah. Okay. Uh, putting that in the A tier. Uh, Mark, where to next? So this is Sun Song, which uh, it's you're, it's found in the royal family's tomb in the Kakariko Village graveyard. And this is the one where Link can play it whenever like Redeads or Gibdos are around, and they'll be stunned momentarily. 
is this not also the one that will uh, change day to night and night to day? Oh, yeah, you're right. It will. I find this one a little bit unremarkable. I also find it unremarkable. It's also not really, you know, it claims to be the sun's song, but it's really just the melody with, like, no real accompaniment. Mm -hmm. um, and, but, and the way it ends with that, like, I'm like, nah, I don't need it. Yeah. C tier? I think C tier. All right. C tier is going over here on top of the focus right preamp. Okay. Um, next, Mark. Is uh, the mm -hmm. Song of Time. So this is the song that's required to open the door of time and obtain the Master Sword. That's a pretty good one. It is pretty good. I was thinking, so I think it's Better than Sun's song, for sure. I agree with that. Uh, I want to say it's on par with Zelda's Lullaby. But like, I feel like it's, it's better than Zelda's Lullaby, but I don't think it's a categorically different than Zelda. You know what I mean? Like, right. I think it's yeah, still within, yes. in, in, in that B tier. Um, it's also weird that like it stop, you stop playing it midway through the phrase, right? Because it's that ba-boo-boo-ba-boo-boo. And then and that's it, it. And then it takes over. Uh -huh. And when it takes over, it repeats that and then finishes. Ba -da -da -do -do -da -do, um, which it, it's very cool when it finishes itself, but it feels very in a way that the rest of these, uh, especially these kid ones, don't. Um, like these all feel like complete statements when you play. Right. Them. The Song of Time feels like the best part is being is out of your control. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, and f okay, now the the last of the of the kid songs. Yes, the Song of Storms. Song of Storms. And this is a crazy one, so here we go. Of course, that made it rain. <laughs> okay, so I love the Song of Storms as a like complete piece of music. Mm -hmm. um, and you get to hear a little bit of it. You know, when the ocarina takes over after you've inputted your your notes. Um, I kind of want to... I, I feel like it belongs with Saria's song and Epona's song. Like it belongs in the A tier? Uh-huh. All right. This is all good, like, preliminary work. Um, And I think there's going to be more motion within these tiers once we really start, like, comparing them. Um, The Song of Storms, I just... It's very... The when you hear it in the the windmill and like the crazy guy is just like playing on the organ grinder, um, is one of the like most quintessentially Zelda moments in right. that game. Like it's weird and it's a little creepy, but like it's also fun. I don't know. It's a it, it, it's it's a special piece of music tied to like a special thing in in the game. So now we get to the warp songs. So you're you learn these during your quest and. They will take you outside of like the different temples that you'll visit. Um, I like that all of these have uh, like different names. Like you know, a, a lot of the rest of these are are songs, right? Uh -huh. Um, Song of Storm, Saria Song, uh, Zelda's Lullaby. I guess is the outlier here. Um, but all of the warp songs uh, are um, named for like specific kinds of of music, and sometimes it's really reflected in what it sounds like. Um, but so let's start with uh, the Minuet of the Forest. We're not warping to the forest temple. Um, but, uh, you know, they, that's so clearly in, like, a little minuet waltz. Oh, I love this one. So um, I love this one. I kind of think all of these travel songs are baller. They're they're really good. Uh, it, it, and yeah. I wonder if it's purposeful uh, because, you know, you have, like, the initial songs you learn as a child and these that um, you learn as adult Link. 
And these feel just much more, even just like the orchestrations, yes. like the joy. Richer, for sure. Yeah, like it just feels more complex. Well, and sorry, I, 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 I want to play that one again just because like, let's really listen for the, um, there's a, a, a term in uh, music uh, called the, the Picardy Third, and it's actually maybe not in this one. Um, but uh, the Picardy Third is when uh, in you uh, you would be ending on the uh, tonic chord, the like main home chord of a song or a piece of music that's in a minor key. But instead of just doing the minor uh, chord, you just make it the major chord. Um, and just listen to you. You'll hear it a lot in like um, church, like chorales, like, you know, large uh, sort of pieces of music like that. But just listen to the quality at the end of Minuet of the Forest and tell me it doesn't sound like something you would hear in church. That just sounds like, you know, uh, uplifting in, yeah. in, in a way at the I, end. I also just really, I love the, like, kind of call and response. Yes. Part of it, like, with the, uh, which one was it that, was it Saria's song? Or whatever that we said had, like, kind of pastoral feel to yeah, it. Yeah, Epona song. Epona song. This also feels very pastoral to mm -hmm. me. Um, I want to go S tier with this. Yeah, I love, this is my favorite so far. I, I really uh, love the Minuetta Forest. Uh, all right, uh, where are we going next, Mark? We're going to the Bolero of Fire. And ooh, I just love the word Bolero. Yeah, I mean, of course, uh, it recalls uh, Ravel's Bolero, the most famous uh, Bolero. Which also originally was go intended to be the, Great point. the underscore for The Legend of Zelda. Uh, which is uh, an, an interesting thing to consider. The part of what makes the Ravel Bolero so like iconic and uh, special is not that it's a, a fantastic piece of uh, composition, but that it's a fantastic piece of arrangement. Because um, it's a one melody that just like continues over and over again, but uh, it gets bigger and bigger, and the orchestration becomes richer and more bombastic uh, every single time it's it's repeated. Um, but the there's this uh, ostinato rhythm that kind of goes under it, this like... Um, and the bolero of fire borrows that. Um, so let's listen to a little bit of the Bolero Fire. Again, ending on that major chord where we had no business being in a major key. Um, but yeah, that little like that snare drum uh -huh. that kind of like un underscores it. Another one that's very cool. I don't know that I put it in the same class as the minuet of, of the forest. Does that one feel longer to you, though? I mean, it, yes. I, I know the inputs are longer. This right. is the one that's eight button inputs in order for it to start. But it feels like you're rewarded for that extra little bit of effort because yes. uh, that's some real music going on. Right. Like, well, and what's interesting, uh, again, to like compare it to the Ravel Bolero is that um, it doesn't get too much more uh, like complicated in terms of its texture, but it does become more harmonically complicated as it moves through different chords to get to that. Uh, I think it's an E major chord at the end. Um, but yeah, and again, just like sitting on a major chord, which should be minor, which is still just endlessly funny to me. So I, I would put it in A tier, I think. Let's put it in the A tier. Ugh, Bolero fire in the A tier. So going from the longest in the game to the shortest in the game, the Serenade of Water, which is associated with the Water Temple. Just five inputs. Uh, and two of those inputs consecutively are the same, um, although the chord under them will hear changes. Um, so th this, is a, this is a cool one. I really like harmonically how this one works. Again, no business ending on that major chord. <laughs> they're all just they're all just genius. 
Yeah. Although I do feel like this one goes in the B tier. I <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I I completely agree. Genius piece of music, B tier. <laughs> I know. I I agree. I feel like this one is by itself when it's just the ocarina uh-huh. does not sound good. And yes. then it is when the accompaniment comes in that it's like a nice reveal. You're like, oh, I see how this all works together. Right. Well, and like I. I almost wanted to like, uh, cause it's that, uh, 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 and it, I feel like I want to be like, uh, 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 mm-hmm. and it's just like, it's lacking in those, uh, rhythmic subtleties, even when it plays it back to you. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's good enough to not be in the C tier with a sun song. <laughs> I've also got to say, I, it's my least favorite name. The serenade Serenade of water. Yeah. I mean, a serenade is also just a song, right? That's just a different word for song. I feel like it should have been aria of water. Sure. Like Avatar 2. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. We're on a James Cameron thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Up next is the Nocturne of Shadow. Now, talking about a good name. Nocturne of Shadow. Uh, Yeah. Uh, Perhaps redundant as Nocturne means like (laughs) night music, right? Um, but yeah, a little, a little Nocturne of Shadow goes like this. I'm going to take it again. Again, faking the major key at the end. Yeah, this one, they're like, oh, we're faking you out. This one's depressing, except at the very yeah, end, the very we're going to we're gonna come up a little bit. Well, and what's, uh, you know, all of, not all of these, but a lot of these pieces uh, are uh, ambitious harmonically, but uh, truly there is no tonality to the beginning of the Nocturne of Shadows. The left-hand accompaniment is uh, parallel fifths going up by uh, half steps. Um, which, le- I mean, I think we need to listen to it again because it truly, when you're listening for that uh, harmonic information, sounds insane in your brain. Uh, so I- I'm gonna I'm gonna play it again. It's so discordant. Until it gets, you know, nice and sweet. Uh-huh. Uh, I, this is a C tier to me. I um, appreciate it, but I don't really like it. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, where I'm coming from as well. <laughs> uh, but I did want us just to appreciate uh, what, what's happening there harmonically. So next is the Requiem of Spirit. This is the one that Sheik teaches Link after he enters the Spirit Temple. Always got to leave you feeling happy. Yes, they 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 all leave you feeling happy. I like that this one has like uh, a an interesting little like counterpoint uh, melody to the main ocarina melody that like echoes that same line back to it. Can we listen to it again? Yeah. I'm gonna tell it I don't want to warp to the graveyard. Should we record all of our episodes with just the ambient sound <laughs> of Ocarina of Time? It's very relaxing to me. I'm, like melting into my seat. It's cool. What do you think? I like it more than I... I feel like it is, for me, a more pleasing Nocturne of Shadow. 
Yeah, I, I, I will agree with that. I feel like they're playing with a lot of the same ideas. Yeah. I just, I like the... Well, rec- the yeah, like one is, one is holy and the other is uh, death, right? Yeah, that's a good point. But yeah, I think I like the Requiem of Spirit more, but it's still like B tier yeah, to me. Yeah, I'll agree with that. So that leaves us with the final song, which is the Prelude of Light. Goes like this. Wow, that triangle, I've never really noticed it before. Like, really working <laughs> overtime. Yeah, re- triangle is really working <laughs> overtime. Um, I don't love this one. It feels like the sun song to me. Yeah, I don't really love this one either, which is kind of disappointing. It feels like it should be the grandest. But it's it not. It never gets it's, going. It's kind of just like it starts at bright and cheery, and then once the melody fades away, it's just, uh, it's just like s- sustained chords. Uh, and then that triangle, like you said. Do you mind playing it one more time? Yeah, let's do it. It's like I want there to be melody here. Yeah, and it, ju- it just kind of like... Especially the beginning feels like it could be building to something, and instead it it just kind of dissolves at the end. Yeah. Also, that like bum 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 uh, feels like it could be a like an '80s new wave song, right? <laughs> hey, that's not like um, a Dexie's Midnight Runner <laughs> no, B side. <totally. laughs> yeah, which is um, in some ways a virtue. Uh huh. But if that's what if that's what it was gonna be, it's gotta really jam. Right. And it never jams. Right. Come on, Eileen. <laughs> so I think that it's, is I think it's going in the C tier. That's a C tier. Uh all right. So let's review what we've got here. Right. Um and if we need to hear any of this music again, you just let me know and I will play it. Um so uh, in the in the C tier, we've got the Nocturne of Shadow, the Sun Song, and the Prelude of Light. Prelude of Light. In the B tier, we have the Song of Time, Zelda's Lullaby, the Serenade of Water, and Requiem of Spirit. Uh, in the A tier, we've got Epona's Song, Saria's Song, the Song of Storms, and the Bolero of Fire. And then in the S tier, we have the Minuet of Forest. All by itself. All by itself. Um, do we think that we need to uh, graduate any of these A tier songs to the S tier? Or is the Minuet of Forest just like our number one? I, th- I think for... N- I, th- I mean, honestly, I I know you just put the ocarina away, but I feel like the only way the ocarina is gonna... uh, it, it's it's right here. I feel like the only way we're gonna be able to do this is to do we want to start at the bottom or do we just want to uh, figure out the headliners right now? No, let's start at the bottom. Okay. Um. So, Nocturne of Shadow, Saria Song, Requiem of Light. No, Sun Song. Sun Song. Yeah. Like the character from Lost. That's right. Uh. Yes, this makes sense. Okay. Jin song <laughs> thoughts uh let's see i so i think that oh nocturne of shadow and prelude of light i feel for me i think the sun song is at the bottom of this okay and do you think it's just because uh it has the un- like it is just unfortunately the least complex of all of these i think so yeah like the payoff for inputting sun song is not that good yeah yeah, I, 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 I do feel that that is the case. Um, uh, but the Prelude of Light versus the Nocturne of Shadow, uh, I think we're going to have to play these okay. to, to really be able to say any, any, anything about them. So first, the Nocturne of Shadow. Give us a little break from the Prelude of Light. This is better than the Prelude of Light. There's something about the Prelude of Light that is like chintzy. Like, yes. Feels like cheap. Yeah, uh, I agree. I agree with that. Um. Yeah. So I I agree. I think. Do you mind playing Sun Song again? Because I wonder if Prelude of Light might be the least good piece okay. of music. Here, here's the Sun Song.
And then, of course, a, a, a rooster announcing the dawn of a new day. Uh, what do you think? Or do you need to hear the, the prelude of, of light one more time? Let's uh, let's hear the prelude of light. I'm sad to say I can already I can hear the triangle echo echoing in my head. I don't know. It's just like the prelude of light is so much more complex. Yeah. You know, but uh I think I like it better than the sun song. Okay. I, right. I, I go sun song, prelude of light, uh, and then nocturne of shadow. Although the nocturne of shadow may climb its way out of this Maybe, yeah. Tier. Well yeah, because we're basically done with tiers and now moving into the moving into the ranking. Right. So I do think it's possible. Um, so uh, in, in the B tier here, we've got the Song of Time, Zelda's Lullaby, the Serenade of Water, and the Requiem of Spirit. Um, probably Serenade of Water is the least good of these for me. I do think so. Um, do we need to hear that at all? Or I'm just going to put it above the Nocturne of Shadows? Yeah, let's put it above the Nocturne of Shadows for now. Can we hear the Requiem of Spirit again? Uh, we certainly can. Uh, Requiem of Spirit uh, goes like this. It's cool. That's a good piece of music. It is cool. I think I like Zelda's Lullaby more than I like uh, the Requiem of Spirit. But I don't know about the Song of Time. Uh, should we hear the Song of Time? Sure. Uh, and and again, the, these kids songs don't get um, a lot of... What am no, I looking for it, right now? Song of Time. Song of Time. It definitely puts them at a disadvantage. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're right. I think it goes Song of Time, Requiem of Spirit, and then Zelda's Lullaby on top of that. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Zelda's Lullaby, better than the Song of Time. No. No, no, no. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, the Requiem of Spirit above Song of Time, and then Zelda's Lullaby above Requiem of Spirit. Yeah. That 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 feels right to me. Should we just keep on this and then, like, check the list as as we go, or should we check the list right now? Yeah, let's let's go into the A tier. Okay, going into the A tier. Um, although once we do the A tier, the Minuet of Forest is just like guaranteed. <laughs> let's just double check something here. I wanna I wanna determine whether we like the Serenade of Water or the Nocturne of Shadows better. Okay. Um, because I think that may be uh a, a question. Which would you like to hear first? Let's do the uh, Serenade of Water. There's something about the step down in Serenade of Water, like at the end there, that um, uh, feels very Zelda to me. Oh, interesting. Uh, in a way that like the Nocturne of Shadow, which we should play, right? Like doesn't, um, like musically doesn't feel like you know like Zelda. I think if it were just me, I would flip them. But uh, if if you like the Serenade of Water better, I, I think we can we can leave the ranking as it is. I do think I I, th I do think I like the Serenade of Water okay. better. Okay. Uh, but I'm glad that we went back and investigated it. Yes. Uh, okay. So now we are in the A tier, which consists right now of Epona Song, Saria Song, the Song of Storms, and the Bolero of Fire. And I've got to tell you, I think the only way we're gonna be able to do this 
is by like by playing them. Okay. Uh, well, call them out, and I will. Uh, because you know I have to go over to the ocarina here. <laughs> okay, let's do a uh, opponent song first. Okay. Should, should we go right into? I mean, may, one? maybe we should. Yeah, just just call them out and I'll play them. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do Bolero of Fire next. Pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It's almost not a fair fight. Let's do Saria song. Oh boy. <laughs> that that's also like elemental, right? I know like, that that's the thing. It's like what that is able to do with just a few notes. Um, yeah, yeah. Where, like, the bolero of fire really kicks in when it has, like, the lush orchestration behind it. Right. But it's also, like, that's a thing about a bolero. Right, right. <laughs> uh, okay, last one, which is the Song of Storms. And I guess all of the uh, kid songs do, in fact, have, like, more music that go with them. They're just part of the, like background music in other areas of the game uh -huh. so maybe judging them just on what link performs uh is selling them a little short but that's actually what we're doing here right yeah i mean i i comparing saria song and having song of storms right after it they are in some ways very similar to me yeah they're both little dances they're but both I, little jigs they are little jigs and i think i like the song of storms better uh, between the two. I think that's right. Sorry, a song that do da da do da da that is very uh like kind of joyful. Um, but Song of Storms gets to joy and like eerie discomfort at the same time. Has a little bit of more like complexity at the end. Um and the but Epona's song is so first of all, I think it's very interesting that when Link plays Epona's song, he uh squares off all the notes. So it's uh bum 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 bum, but when you go to the actual Lon Lon Ranch, it's ba da da, ba da da. It swings them a little bit. Um, it's just funny to think that like Link is too square to <laughs> to swing when he plays. Well, yeah, and it, at Lon Lon Ranch, it almost has like that little bit of like Western twang, yeah, like rodeo yeah. to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think I like Epona's song better than uh either of the other two songs that we're talking about right now. I think I do too. Uh, but wither the bolero. So, so uh, j just within this, uh, we're saying that uh, of of the three songs, Saria's song is the bottom, Song of Storms is the middle, and Epona's song is the top. But where does the bolero go? I. It's a fun like novelty. It, uh -huh. it, 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 it's its joys do feel like novelty, right? But that's not bad. It's not bad. It's hard because I, listening to the Bolero of Fire, I was like, oh, yeah, that's a good piece of music. But I did not recall the Bolero of Fire mm. before this, whereas, like, Saria's song, the Song of Storms, and Epona's song are all yeah. foundational. Yes. Well, they're, they're foundational, and they have multiple uses throughout the game. The Bolero of Fire, you only use it to warp to the fire dungeon. Right? Like, yeah. So uh, any of the adult songs just get like way less use. Once you've uh, like finished the forest temple, you never have to play the Minuet of Fire or the Minuet of Forest ever again. Uh huh. Um, but I feel like the Minuet of Forest captures uh, like the essence of Ocarina of Time yeah, I agree in a that. way that like the Blaro of Fire does. And, and none of the other adult ones do. You know, like I feel like the Minuet of Forest mm. is the closest to. Zelda's Lullaby, Epona's song, Song yeah, of Storms, and Saria that. song, in that you're like, oh yeah, this this sounds like Ocarina of Time. I kind of tentatively want to put it, uh, put Bolero of Fire 
below Song of Storms, but above Saria's song. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, I guess just by process of elimination, Minuet of the Forest is our number one. It's our number one. Let's listen, let's listen to it again. Make sure that we're happy with this. Because, uh, not to put you on the spot, Patrick, but I think when we go from bottom to top, I'm going to ask you to play all of them. What do you mean not to put me on the spot? <laughs> uh, Minuet of Forest first, of course. It's great. It I feel, is really I feel good. like it's good twice. Like it is good in like the very like uh like minuetty like little waltz part of it. Um, and then when it like gets to the more like lush strings and it's like no, this is Zelda. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. It just it just feels uh like that is a a perfect little ocarina piece. Well, I think so. Minuetta Forest is at the top of our list. And I, I really think the best way to go through and gut check this is I will read them up and it'll just be easy for us to compare, you know, one after the other. And we can kind of decide if anything needs to move. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, so we are starting with Sun Song, which is number 12 on our list currently. Oops. And truly, that's all that music ever is. It never has more accompaniment to it. No, there's like, uh, cause we, I've talked about this before. I listen to mixes of video game music while I'm working a yeah. lot of the time. And so often after Sun Song, there is like uh, music that goes yeah. with it that's very just kind of like gentle. And if you heard, I'm not even going to try to hum it because there's no way I could. But if you heard it, it's like instantly iconic. But it is not part of Sun's mm -hmm. song. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, up next is the Prelude of Light. Where'd my melody go? The Ocarina just takes a break, lets a harp <laughs> take over. <laughs> Is there something about, like, Mario 64? Does that remind you a little bit of, like, Mario 64? Uh, I feel like when the ocarina goes away and it's just kind of the... Um, oh, sure, yeah. The, like, it, dun, dun, right. those, if, like, steps. If it just had, um, like, that, that kick and beat to it, it would be, like, the end of uh, Mario 64. That, like, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. But never gets there. Uh, up next is the Nocturne of Shadow. Uh, which is, I maintain, a cool piece of music. Do kind of feel like it chickens out at the end, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That it's like so dark and weird, and then it's like, oh no, we'll just end happy because they all end happy. So, uh, number nine is Serenade of Water. That one's like church. <laughs> uh, number eight is Song of Time. Sorry. Are we undervaluing the Song of Time? That's pretty good. It is pretty good, but I mean, wh where is that on our list? Number seven? Uh, 10, 9, 8. And number 8. Yeah. 
Uh, well, let's compare it to the Requiem of Spirit. Yeah, that, that'll, that'll be a nice uh, comparison point. Uh, do we like it more or less than what we're about to hear? Requiem of Spirit is a little bit of like a dirge, right? Um, and I that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I wonder if maybe you're right that the Song of Time should be above that. Yeah, that's kind of how I'm feeling. All right, so, uh, swap so we'll swap that. So Song yeah. of Time does become number seven. Hey, I'm a prophet. And Requiem of Spirit, <laughs> number eight. So our number six is Zelda's Lullaby. Oh, and I'm playing all of these? <laughs> did, I, did I forget what we were doing? <laughs> Honestly, are we undervaluing this one? I mean, it's pretty Im impeachable. Uh, uh, sh unimpeachable. Let, yes. Well, let, let, let's compare to uh, Saria's song and see if uh, maybe Zelda's lullaby should bump that one down. Listen. Oh, never mind. Saria's song is better. Saria's song is. Saria's song is better. Yeah. Um. Uh, I gotta say it. Uh, I these are easier to play on a Nintendo sixty four controller than on <laughs> the three DS. Than on the three DS. Wait, wait, I want to go back. Do you do you think Saria song is better? I think I here's my deal is that I think like tell me what your deal is. Zelda's lullaby being used <laughs> elsewhere in the series uh -huh. way more than like Saria's song is makes me. It's the music of the Lost Woods. It I is, feel like it's ubiquitous. But that's like but like it's for, it's for in, good or for ill. Yeah, what we've heard of Saria's song. Is sorry a song? It just like repeats endlessly. No, but it's you know, like it builds up to a. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I feel like you can groove out to sorry a song and the music of the Lost Woods more than you. You definitely can't. You can't dance to Zelda's lullaby. You can't dance to Zelda's lullaby. Oh, by the way, I got to cue up some air horns. I think Zelda. Oh, I'm really torn on this one. I I, I think Zelda's I, lullaby stays where it is. Okay, all right. I say it advances no further. I'll tr trust your I'll trust your gut. And let's do the Bolero of Fire. I just think it's so cool. I think I I think it is I think it is really neat. I was gonna, Oh no. <laughs> I'm so you sorry. You were you were getting what? I I feel like it should go below above the song of time below Zelda's lullaby. Above the song no way. It's so much better than Zelda's lullaby. This feel Bolero of Fire and look, I get that like Zelda's lullaby ends up appearing in many uh, other Zelda games, but the Bolero of Fire is like borderline a complete musical thought. Mm -hmm. Like uh, it is as close to like a full piece of music as any of these ever become. I, I think know. that's I, fair. I, I, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. I feel I feel really good with it where it is. Okay, and I love the little uh, the use of the um, Ravel snare drum to uh, 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 call, call that idea of, like, the bolero forward. And, uh, you know, it's the bolero's relationship to the original Zelda. Like, and that's all very compelling That's a good to me. point. Okay, so we're into our top three, then. Top three! So number three is the Song of Storms. And again, you really gotta remember that it keeps going. Yeah, you do have to remember the rest of it. Yeah, because like with with without like the organ grinder, like it 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 feels kind of hollow. But like we know where it comes from and what it grows into. So I, I think third place is right for that. So number two is a Pona song.
Tell me what you're thinking. Um, Mark's you know, lo- looking at me like he's uh, I'm like co- he's doing some serious thinking. I do wonder if opponent's song and song of storms should be. Flipped. Let's swap them. Let's swap them. Uh, so uh, opponent's song being demoted to number three. Song of Storms being at number two, which and uh, the Minuet of the Forest. I think we need to just hear it one more time because I think it is our unquestioned uh, winner here of the tournament. Uh, Minuet of the Forest goes like this. So good. I love it. I think it totally works. Um, so that's our number one. Yeah. So I think we have our list. Do we need to recap it? Just <laughs> Yeah. Are you ready to play them all again as we go through it? Stop that. <laughs> number 12, Sun Song. Number 11, The Prelude of Light. <laughs> number 10, Nocturne of Shadow. Number 9, The Serenade of Water. Number 8, Requiem of Spirit. Number 7, For Real This Time, The Song of Time. Number, as Patrick foretold. Yes. Uh, number 6, Zelda's Lullaby. Number 5, Saria's Song. Number 4, The Bolero of Fire. Number 3, Epona's Song. Number 2, The Song of Storms. And number 1, the best piece of ocarina music is the Minuet of the Forest. All right, Mark, let's close this out. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Remember, uh, get in our Discord or email us if you think we uh, messed anything up here. Yeah, I think there is a lot of room for debate. I think so, too. And it's all very subjective. Um, And uh, I, I feel like we did a good job, but I don't feel like we did the only possible good job. I think you're right. Nonetheless, this is definitive. Oh, I... For sure. Um, and Patrick, just yes. I wanted to say thank you so much for accompanying us. Uh, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of pressure <laughs> to have to play these songs on uh, on demand. So uh, thank I, you very much. I should have brought a piano and just uh, played these with a real <laughs> instrument. Uh, thank you so much to our 16 bit patrons, uh, patrons Connor McKay, Patrice Millette, and David Headley. We appreciate you all very much. We appreciate everyone who is supporting us on the Patreon, and we support. Uh, we appreciate you. For listening and to the show. And we support you. You're and right. We, no, I don't think we do. <laughs> Look, if you make decisions we don't like, I don't know that we're going to support this. <laughs> uh, join the Discord. Uh, email us, Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. Anthony DeLuca made our logo. Our theme music is provided by Ape Betty. You can get more of his music by going to apebetty.com or by listening right now. For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Ellery saying thank you for listening. We'll